Greetings out there everyone in YouTube land. This is DJ Think coming back to you with another video, obviously. Uh, this time, I'm going to stick with LPs. Uh, I would prefer to do 45s, but I don't have a camera right now to really zoom in. And obviously it's a very selective kind of thing. But anywho, I thought I would kind of stay on the similar topic I do for the 45s, which is record label specifics. Uh, as in like one specific record label. So tonight we will be doing SST records, LPs, and SST, if you don't know, is Greg Ginn of Black Flag, the guitarist of Black Flag's uh, record label that he started in the late 70s, actually, in Hollywood. Um, and it's, it's a very near and dear to my heart. I was very into punk when I was young. Uh, it was one of those genres that appealed to me. At the same time, it was something I didn't fit into either, but the music spoke to me. Um, and that, I think, is really what mattered. Um, but it was kind of like a big influence on grunge. Certainly Black Flag went on to be kind of more heavy metal sounding in the mid-80s. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but I'm going to try to go through this just like I do with the 45s um, by catalog number. And because... Uh, they're LPs, I'll be able to show them and you'll be able to see something as opposed to me holding up uh, record after record with the same label, which uh, uh, doesn't work when I don't have HD quality video, which I don't right now as my last two videos uh, can attest to. So without any further ado, here we go. No fancy editing. We're going to go through my SST catalog of LPs. First up, we got probably the second most famous and oldest band on SST, and that is, woo, that is close, the Minutemen. That's going to work a little better. There we go. The Minutemen, and this album is the punchline, SST number four. The Minutemen were quick. <laughs> You know, no pun there, and they actually hated that. Uh, Minutemen, of course, referring to Quick Militia, but um, uh, the Minutemen were kind of heavy jazz influence almost. Quick, short, quirky, weird, melancholy punk. Uh, they were not popular. They had a large man who was their front singer who died, but the famous one from this band is Mike Watt, and uh, I've actually seen Watt like five, six times, more than any other musician. So Minutemen hold a close place to my heart. Next up, we got a compilation. This is on SST 13, and this is all the early stuff. That is a Raymond Pettibone cover, which was actually Greg Ginn's brother, who did all the artwork for SST back in the day. Uh, pretty controversial there. The bands on this are Black Flag, which of course is Greg Ginn's band. Later, of course, the singer uh, would ultimately be Henry Rollins from the East Coast. Uh, Husker Du, Saccharine Trust, Worm, Minuteman, Meat Puppets, Stains, and Overkill. Overkill, oddly enough, being a metal band. Uh, next up, we got another Minutemen. This is Buzzer Howe, Under the Influence of Heat. Really great album. They were super influenced by political stuff, uh, Bob Dylan stuff. Um, this is number 16 on SST in 1983. Originally out of Lawndale. I said LA, but Lawndale would be the specific area. This is going good. Next up, we finally got a black flag. I used to have more, but I sold a bunch, unfortunately. This is a live one. It's Who's Got the Ten and a Half Inch. Uh, this is SST 60, so we jumped up a pretty substantial amount there. This, of course, will have Henry Rollins. Try to get some of this. Uh... Wow. Glare City. I don't even know if I can make use of this video here. All right. I'm not going to zoom in because it's just glaring like crazy. We'll go with the long... The long shot. Next up, we got a really important uh, band. Kurt Cobain was a huge fan, championing them with the, with the, um, with the unplugged, uh, Meat Puppets. This is a great morning album, with your cup of Joe. Up on the sun. These guys from Arizona. They were not from Southern California, and they had their own twist of acid tinged. Neil Young meets Grateful Dead, only in punk rock incarnate. Uh, if you never heard the Meat Puppets. The early stuff I recommend. This is a great album. This is uh, SST 39. So I guess my stuff is not in order here. But I love this LP because it's an egg. Check that out. Check out that glare. 
There you go. An egg. Next up, I believe this is an EP by the Puppets of Meat. Out My Way. This is a five-songer. This is number 49 on SST. Next up, super controversial East Coast hardcore band. Basically started hardcore. Uh, All-black group of Rastafarians known as Bad Brains. And this is their one real album on SST, I Against I. It's kind of metal. It reminds me of Faith the More. And I didn't like it at first, but I've had this probably 10, 15, 20 years, and I love this album now. It's SST 65. For those of you keeping track of the numbers. Next up, this is Sealed, actually, because I have the greatest hits. Uh, this is a metal band. It wasn't all punk, obviously, on SST. This is St. Vitus. It almost looks like Norwegian black metal. Uh, Born Too Late. And this is a sealed copy I have. And the famous guy in this is Wino, Scott Weinrich. Uh, next up, we have the follow-up to the, the Flesh Eaters, which was a super group of Southern Hollywood uh, punk people, such as people from X and even Los Lobos. And this was the follow-up, Divine Horseman. This is SST91. Not as good as the Flesh Eaters. Flesh Eaters were on Slash. Check them out. They had a marimba player. Truly amazing. Next up, I have a sensor this. Oh, got busted already. Uh, the Leaving Trains. And this is that. <laughs> Next up, a Berkeley SST group. It's Negative Land. They were more of a media hoax band and then a band. Truly amazing. Check out these guys. SST has been, I have an SST tattoo. I showed it to Greg Ginn uh, when I lived in Pomona, when I lived down in the Inland Valley. Next up, another Puppets here. This might go well with the other one. We got Huevos. Next to the one with a cup of coffee. It seems like I could frame these and put them in my kitchen. Uh, that's a pretty great idea, actually. Uh, what do we got here? I think we're up into the hundreds now. Next up, I got a Bad Brains. It's a live one. Is HR the lead singer. Super intense, dude. Amazing. Looks like it says evil right there. It's live backwards, but this band is not evil. This band is brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Next up, an obscure one, a one-shot. Always August. Kind of a, if I remember right, almost like a sublime, like, kind of experimental indie, or, or early indie lo-fi group. Next up, everyone will know this one, and this is on SST. Soundgarden with Ultra Mega OK. Uh, this is before grunge hits. Uh, they didn't, I think the reason why this is called Ultra Mega OK was because what was the sound of Soundgarden? The sound was, well, Ultra Mega OK, you know, and it would become known as grunge. I mean, Soundgarden was very early on in that, in that genre. Uh, but they originally started off on the, the famous punk label, which, of course, Kurt Cobain wanted Nirvana to be on as well. Uh, next up, we have some more controversy from Negative Land. This is Helter Stupid. They had a whole thing. It would take me hours to go through it. Search on YouTube. It's crazy. These guys were serious pranksters. Like I said, they're a media hoax group from Berkeley. They're not a band. Uh, this was their follow-up to that previous album I showed you about a song of theirs called Christianity is Stupid. And they made a fake thing that actually got on the news about how a kid had killed himself because of the song. And it was all a hoax. And that's Native Land to a T. Uh, here's that St. Vitus Greatest Hits, which is open, heavier than thou and that they are. They are true stoner metal. True, true, true. Still, that's on SST, as all these are. Next up, SST Acoustic. This is a uh, obscurity, to say the least. By the way, if I didn't mention it earlier, SST, this label that we're discussing today, is actually, a few people know the acronym, but it's actually for Solid State Tuner, which was the ham radio business that Greg Ginn of Black Flag, the guitarist, the founder and owner of the label, started when he was in his like high school, early era. It was a catalog for ham radio parts. He was into electrical engineering and such. Next up, another super famous young group, speaking of young people doing stuff, The Descendants. I Don't Want to Grow Up. Not the best album. The best album is Milo and Goes to College, which most people know. Again, famous, famous, famous SST group. And last up, this is actually not the original SST 
label, but this is a reissue that I have, and I thought I'd put this in for uh, safekeeping because it is an SST release originally. I just don't have the original. No one cares about that but me. I'm um, like the vinyl uh, vinyl accountant here in the VC. Uh, that's vinyl community for those of you that don't know. I just learned that myself. But uh, this is a fabulous album. Super noisy. On the tip of Sonic Youth, who also was their best stuff, was on SST, such as Evol and Sister. Uh, I'm going to end it on this. I, mean, I had a band in high school. We covered the opening song on this, uh, Little Fury Things. Uh, Dinosaur Jr. is amazing. It sounds like acid-tinged country feedback beautifulness. Um, check them out. They went kind of pop in the 90s. They actually had a hit, which is good for, good for Jay. He's actually a drummer for a metal band, too. But uh, Dinosaur Jr. originally wanted to be titled Dinosaur. They get sued from a 60s band named Dinosaur. And changed it to Dinosaur Jr. And that's brilliant. I mean, that's better than Dinosaur 2, right? Uh, and on that note... SST, Solid State Tuners, Old Souls Club, better than looking at 45s, right? That's why people do LPs over 45s, they want to see visuals, so here's your visuals, kids. Buy vinyl, smooth sailing, happy digging.